getting you ready now for the start of fall camp. If you can believe it, the Huskers will report to uh, the Selleck dorms on July 30th, which is a Sunday. That's also the same day as Fan Photo Day, um, which is indoors this year. Uh, they're going to do that inside the Hawks. Um, and then they'll open camp July 31st, Monday. Do we know, do you have any inkling on, on what it's going to look like for the media, Sipple? Uh, availability? Yes. For August, just August? Yeah. No. I wish Still I to be determined. I think it'll be pretty good, though. I think the availability will be it's good. Usually like three to four days a week with three photo days, maybe. Three photo days, a couple lake days for me in there. <laughs> um, yeah. But anyway, no, we'll get, come on. I mean, we've, we've gotten good access with, oh, Google, yeah. And I imagine it'll continue. Yeah. I'm sure. And, you know, there, there's, there's the perfect balance of you don't want to be too much access. Right. There was a time where we'd go over there every day in August, twice mm -hmm. a day. Sometimes twice a day, which was ridiculous. Yes, and, was. and you'd, I mean, August was harder than like the season. Yeah. Cause you'd have to come up with things and you, you didn't get to watch a lot of stuff. Um, but rule one, we, yeah, he has said that we won't get to watch like scrimmages. And his reasoning was like, you know, he, he doesn't want the players to feel like they're being written about like a game and practice. Puts pressure on them. Cause, you know, if a guy has a bad scrimmage, puts pressure on him. Sipple writes a huge column questioning mm -hmm. the player. Is he the guy? That was a that was um, a rationale that I'd never heard before. It makes sense though. Yeah, I've never heard a coach at Nebraska say that. That the concern is not what you guys see and that you put out there for opponents. It's the pressure it puts on our individuals because of the way the world is now. Well, in the pro football focus grades, he has said too, like yeah. messed with NFL players, messed with NFL it's the players. social media era too, yeah. like. People are filming practice, and a guy drops a ball. You know, it's going to go viral and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden, they have their mentions blowing up about how bad they are, and it's it's a head game for sure. NFL players would look at their pro football focus, and it would give them anxiety. It, it, they'd look at their PFF grade, and it caused anxiety. It's their yeah. job, yeah. right? Yeah, feeding families. And you know that that's I'm sure ownership and general managers they don't watch like the nitty gritty of the film like the coaches might. But they look at those grades, yeah. <laughs> you know, when they're yeah. making personnel and roster decisions. Absolutely. But, um, all right, I, I want to talk tight end okay. first. Um, you know, we we did our projected fall camp depth chart, tight end slash fullback. Uh, tight end, I, I think we all agree. Thomas Fedoni is probably the guy with Nate Borkacher. The, the wild card remains Arik Gilbert and his waiver, and we'll probably get a good answer from Matt Rule. And we talked to Matt Rule Sipple about this in in Texas. And it's not like Nebraska's concerned. It's just a process that they've got to wait through the NCAA. Well, I think the important thing is, and we said it on a previous show, but it bears repeating. They didn't file the waiver. Remember what Matt Rule told us on, I'm going to say, Sean, it was June 8th. Is that about when we were out there? On June 8th, he said, we had only filed the waiver about two weeks ago. So two weeks prior to June 8th. It wasn't like they filed a waiver in February. No, they didn't file the waiver till late May, so there was there, there's going to have to be some time passed before they're going to get an answer. And the other thing that's important to note is that's not just like a a waiver you scribble out on a piece of paper and send to the NCA. It's a very detailed, a lot of depth to it. A lot of depth. You have to. I mean, it takes a lot of thought, and you got to get a lot of facts. And I imagine with Arik Gilbert, it was fairly complex. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the deal. I, and you, Sean, you're saying you think we'll f find out in India? Well, we'll get an update yeah. where it's at, and I'm I mean, not got to get an update. I mean, camp starts here. Like, I'm expecting he'll get it, and it might be a deal where he practices in in August, and they don't know yet for sure, but they assume he's going to get it, and then they find out like the week before the first game. I mean, it could be something like that. Yep. But what what are you? I mean, here's a here's a thought. You didn't see much of Fedoni. They didn't throw Fedoni much in the spring game. You think that was by design? So we don't need to show this kid. He caught one pass for four yards in the spring game. I, my thought was, for, they don't why 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 throw to him a bunch? Why have five catches for ninety five yards in the spring game and get everybody in the in the world's attention? Yeah, because the Keep one the one wild card you have right now is the unknown. You know, if you give PJ Flack and company some film of how to how they're going to utilize one of your best offensive weapons. You're doing yourself a disservice. So you can do all those things in the closed fall scrim or spring scrimmages which uh -huh. are obviously the more important 
practices than the spring game. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they dialed it back with him. They're protecting him, though, yeah. too. Protecting him, too, in terms of injury. He hadn't made it through a spring at Nebraska. This will be the first fall camp he's ever participated in as a full go. It's See, crazy. I just wonder what that – I. I mean, I'm really intrigued by what that might look like. I mean, that might be a the kind of player that I don't know. I don't want to go too far down that road, but Fedoni himself has said what I think. I, you know, I think I can be a first round pick. You know, yeah. I can be an All Big Ten tied in. The talent is there, but more importantly, the work ethic is there and the determination is there, yeah, which is why he immediately emerged as one of the captains of their off season workout programs, which weren't even just workouts, but it was like community service, like leadership he was thrust into that role from the get-go and embraced it head on well i told you what niles paul said when they they were at the warren academy working out he saw thomas and didn't know who he was niles paul former husker former nfl tight end from omaha um he said he goes who is that guy that nf he, goes, he looks like he's an nfl guy back here working out he goes it reminds me of george kittle yeah i mean that's the kind of guy you're looking at I mean, now is there a wild card in here i mean are we are we counting Janier and Bonner as a guy that can make an impact at Jake tight end? Applegate? What is, about Bonner? Jake App, Applegate is a tight end, and yeah. he's been on the top ten percent as much as any player. Redshirt freshman this this week, so or this summer. I think that's a name that maybe could slide up there. Janier and Bonner, yeah, it's a matter of like how they utilize him. Yeah, like what is this fullback role? Right. I mean, we we all kind of fantasize about what we think and want this fullback role to be. Um, but what is it truly going to be? Right. That's what I want. Yeah, he still considers himself a tight end. Right. After the spring game, they were talking to him about a fullback. He's like, no, I'm, I'm a tight end. Right. I'll He's line listed. up. I'll line up at fullback, but I'll play tight end. I'll split out wide. I'll play the slot. I'll play on the line. I'll play in the backfield. So people were, one comparison that maybe we'll see how it translates, but that maybe you could make is how Northwestern at least used to, Use that super back. Role. Yeah, remember like Dan yeah. Vitale, like yes, that that type of guy. So they lined a, him up everywhere. Yeah, and he was a bear. He was Vitale was a pain in the you know what. Yes, so maybe like ceiling. That's the kind of picture Nebraska could get out of him, but we just don't know until we see it. Yeah, and I don't want to go too far. I mean, I, good one flashed John. Good one flashed in the spring game a little bit. Lincoln High. Lincoln High. Yeah, Rob. I, I made mention of him for Robin's sake. <laughs> Thank you. He, but he did flash a little bit in the, in the spring. Barrett game. Liebentritt from. Notre Dame, the transfer they brought in, um, he played for the Irish as a fullback. He played on special teams. Omaha Scott product. He's a guy to watch. Kaden Becker, tied in, uh, fullback. Oh, full tied in. They're kind of the same thing. I mean, they're interchangeable. Now you're confusing me, Sean. We're, I mean, we're kind of in the same conversation. The tight ends and the fullbacks are, are kind of together. I would God. say, uh, but that's a new wild card name as is Caden Becker um, to to kind of keep your eyes on. But uh, Trevor Ruth to Tre Trevor UNK Ruth transfer. Former, uh, he's related to the Makovicas, by the way. Wow. Uh, but offensive line guys, um, you know, we've hit on this a bunch already on on Nebraska's O line. Yeah, we don't have a lot of time to 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 go in all the weeds on this, but my biggest question is Corcoran. Like, wh where does he land? Hmm. What's his role? And a lot of it is contingent on Prohaska at left tackle, Bryce Benhart at right tackle. How does that puzzle come together? Yeah, I mean Teddy. Teddy Prohaska, Donovan in his radio interview the other day just said flat out he's ready to go. So I think Teddy, see the, that projected fall camp depth chart there, Teddy left tackle. That's what I think you're looking at. Now, what if you're Turner Corcoran, my concern would be, okay, I'm your backup left tackle, and I might be your backup. I could be a backup at guard too. Am I just a backup? Um, I, don't, I don't know, Sean. I don't know what Turner Corcoran's role would be. Ethan Piper looks like your left guard, right? Ben Scott, we know, is the center. Right guard looks like Nora D. Newely. And right tackle looks like Bryce Benhard. So where is Corcoran? Is he your, is he your, sort, of, is he your sort of utility guy, your first up? I think that's an important yeah. role to have because when was the last time Nebraska had five guys over the course of the season? So right. odds are you're going to play. And if you can play – remember, he was repping at center at some point right. too. So he can play, play all center. five spots yeah. on the offensive line. And having a guy like that – is invaluable. Yeah, that just, might just for be, depth. That might be what what you're looking at with him, because they're not low. They're not bad depth wise, but they're there's a they're a little short at a couple spots. I mean, at center, if you just if 
take Corcoran out of the discussion at center. Is it Justin Evans Jenkins? Is that Piper. your back? Or, I think it would be a moving of Corcoran or somebody to center. Yeah. Okay, Didn't that's Piper what, work at center a little bit. Piper, Piper could work too. at center. Yeah, New Ellie could. I mean, there's a lot of guys. Yeah, New Ely. that has have the. Um, Where's Latovsky fit? He's guard. He's strictly guard. Still backup guard. Good backup though. I mean, and they that's... tried to go with him last year, and, and then they went back to Piper. It felt like you know, and then with with Nuri back. It makes a difference having him back. I mean, they've got about seven guys that can play. Yeah. Yeah. And it's you a matter that. of how Donovan wants to rotate and play those seven guys. Latovsky is a guy that if he walked in here and you shook his hand, you'd say, oh, boy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's he's ready to play. And he's physically. lean. Yeah, we were talking guy, about so. him last summer, I remember. Oh, he's and a mountain. He's, he's a mountain. Look, he looked like how he would want an interior offensive lineman in the Big Ten to look like. Yeah, and he looks a little crazy, too, yeah, which is another I'm talking trait. About. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're a little nervous around him. He's you a are. great guy. Yeah. I mean, but, like, he has that look. Yeah, he's got the crazy eyes. He <laughs> never ate, like, his body, if you look at it, it's really cut and lean. Mm -hmm. Growing up, he never had fast food. I think his mom was, like, some sort of like that. Uh, nutritionist. And so he ate healthy. His yeah. Just like, you know, the Rude's mom was a nutritionist. And those, you know, they, they were fed right growing up. And that makes nutrition is a huge part of, you know, how you develop your body, especially at a young age. And I mean, he's a guy that has a great frame. It's a matter of, can he play? But yeah, the O-line and how that puzzle comes together will be a big question.